This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey! What's up, guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame discussion type video. I haven't done one of these in a really long time, actually, and I kind of miss doing them, and I want to implement them back into the channel because it allows me to do things that I don't usually do for other videos, like the dual videos or the card reviews or whatever. It makes me go deeper into research and what I want to talk about, and I really like that. It takes more time, but it reminds me of things that I once knew and forgot, or it introduces me to new information that I may have glanced over at, you know, when it happened or whatever. Uh, and also, it's more of an open-ended discussion type thing where I can see your guys' opinions in the comment section, and it sort of continues on the discussion a little bit further. So, expect more of these types of videos in the future, and basically differing topics. And if you want to suggest your own topics, then definitely feel free to. But, that is not what we're here to talk about today. What we are here to talk about today is... Could it be time for Konami to drop its second ever adjusted list into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh? Now, for those of you that don't remember, an adjusted list, essentially a cleaned up and glorified term for an emergency ban list under the TCG Konami, you know, running organization. The TCG Konami organization, ever since they had control over their own separate ban list since September 2013, they've never had an emergency ban list that they called an emergency ban list. They've had ban lists that, you know, appeared sporadically. But then the closest thing we ever got to an emergency ban list was the adjusted ban list of the January-February time frame in 2016, when Full Power Pepe was running around. Full Power Pendulums, essentially. Uh, now, we got that, and it had a lot of negative backlash in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community of people that had just spent literally thousands of dollars on this Pendulum deck for it to literally be legal at one American YCS and one Australian YCS, being YCS Sydney 2016, and YCS Atlanta 2016, the uh, the event that it was legal over in America. Now, the adjusted list, for those of you that don't remember what it specifically is, is it's a list that goes into an effect over all Tier 2 or higher events. If you're playing at a local, you don't have to abide by this ban list. It is specifically an alternative ban list that all regionals, all YCSs will be held accountable for, but all of the locals don't have to if you don't want to, which made absolutely no sense when they implemented it, because if anything, the locals are going to be the ones that want the adjusted list because it kills off the broken tier zero deck that at the time was full power pendulum. So even from just you know a PR department standpoint of how Konami presented it to the player base, it made virtually no sense in terms of how they were trying to justify it. It was just their way of trying to cover up that it was an emergency ban list that they did not want Full Power Pendulum being a tier 0 deck dominating the format for the you know, better part of the next 3 to 6 months when they could get an actual an actual you know real ban list uh, to be put out. Which I think the next one we got was somewhere around April of, uh, of 2016. Not important. But regardless, what we have now is we have just finished YCS Dallas 2017 and it is the first event that Spirals have ever been legal for in the TCG. Now, there's a lot of connotations that can be drawn between how Spiral is interacting on the metagame and how Full Power Pendulum interacted in its time before its adjusted list was given to it, specifically so that Konami could kill it. And there's a lot of information that we could look at that, you know, lets us draw correlations on whether or not another adjusted list could be in the works and could be coming, should it be coming, and, you know, things that we could look at that might implement, like, information to us that might bring to light like reasons why things could be happening but regardless so what we have is YCS Dallas just finished spirals took 29 out of the top 32 spots which is more than I even thought they were going to get I was talking to people thinking that you know maybe they'll get 20 to 25 and then maybe some magicians will sneak in some ABC players will have really good days and whatnot and then you'll, you'll have that sort of a breakdown but spiral had 29 tops out of top 32 it was so not diverse that it was ridiculous. It is literally the only YCS since YCS Atlanta with full power pendulums where the top cut was that dominated by one specific deck. At YCS Atlanta 2016, 29 out of the top 32 uh, decks were pendulum, were full power pendulum, and then there were two domain monarchs and one Cosmo, one Cosmo artifact, I believe. Um... And for Dallas, it was the exact same breakdown, just with different decks. It was 29 Spirals, 2 Tricksters, and then 1 Invoked deck that got top 32. 
And even the way the decks operate in terms of how they respectively deal with the best deck that's in the room, being Spiral or Pendulum, are very identical. It's very interesting. It's literally like history has repeated itself in this top cut. Of During Pendulum format, in Atlanta format essentially, you had the 29 Pendulum decks, you had two Domain Monarch decks, which were literally decks that were designed around the premise of, I put up Domain and I don't have to worry about what your deck even is. I get to just not care because I shut down half of your deck's resource pool. And then the other deck being Cosmo. The Cosmo deck, you know, being good at going second, being good at disruption, being good at different reasons, different things and different reasons. It's just a deck that was built to play against Pendulums and had a really, really good day in terms of winning die rolls or just having favorable times and positions in their matchups, whatever. At YCS Dallas, we see the same sort of breakdown of 29 Spirals, the above and beyond best deck projected for the event, to Tricksters, which is the sort of Domain Monarch deck in this scenario of like, it can just play all these hand traps because it has a very small engine core, not have to worry about the resources your opponent has because you have so many hand traps at your disposal, but then also the deck has built in disruption in the form of Trickster Reincarnation, which can be used to just, you know, do things to your opponent to mess up their resource pool, make it to where part of their resource pool doesn't matter, they have things removed from their accessibility pool for the rest of the game. There's lots of different things that, you know, go into play there in terms of how that can be structured to be a correlation in terms of how each deck implemented uh, an interaction with the other between Pendulums and Monarchs and between Spirals and Tricksters. And then you have the Invoke deck, which literally just is a deck that was built to go very, very, uh, very uh, well against spirals if its matchups were favorable and if favorable interactions occurred and that is what happened like he had a very very good day in terms of how he played against spirals he had very favorable interactions in his matchups that his deck was built to exploit if they presented themselves so it's very much a one-to-one -one conversion between the last adjusted list time and current potential adjusted list time frame so the the, the potential is there now, there were multiple YCSs under uh, under the full power pendulum uh, nonsense. There was YCS Atlanta, and then, like I said, there was the Australian YCS, which was the first YCS that they were legal at, which was YCS Sydney. Now, I can't find the full top 32 breakdown for YCS Sydney, uh, because for some reason it's just not on their event coverage, but the most I can find is that I can find 13 out of the top 32 decks, and of those decks, four of them were not pendulum. Now. I'm going to assume that these were the only four non-pendulum decks to top, because if any non-pendulum decks had topped during this time, that information would have been incredibly valuable, would have been just, you know, people would have lunged at that information should it had presented itself. So I think it's pretty fair that I can operate on the assumption that only those four non-pendulum decks were the only four non-pendulum decks in the top 32 breakdown cut of YCS Sydney. So 28 out of 32 being, you know, a fairly, you know, fair assumption to make regarding Pendulums being in the top 32 breakdown of Sydney because for some reason Konami's like uh, deck breakdown just isn't on their site anymore for YCS Sydney or either never existed or whatever. There's breakdowns for other YCS Sydneys and other European events and other you know European territory run events but for some reason Sydney 2016 the breakdown is not available. The most I can get is deck statistics for how many Pendulums were there during day one out of the 800 people that entered and then how many of them made it to day two, which is also an astonishing bit of information. Without being able to tell you the full top 32 breakdown of decks, the next best thing that I have as far as concrete information to give you is the deck breakdowns for the entire event in terms of day one and day two, in terms of how many people entered and percentages there and thereof, which I will have on screen at this point. But at YCS Sydney 2016, the day one deck breakdown of out of the 855 players that entered, 195 or 22.8% of those players were playing full power pendulums, were playing full power Pepe. Then you have a good amount of people playing, you know, other decks down the line of magicians, cosmos, heroes, all that sort of nonsense. But then moving on to the day two breakdown, you see that even though the number has been cut from 855 down to 256 to start day two, we still have 137 players playing full power Pepe in the uh, in the event, and the only other deck that hasn't lost over 50% of its competitors is Cosmo. Cosmo losing 20 or so of their competitors. I think the number is like 23 or 27, uh, based off the last number I looked at. Uh, but Perform Pals and Perform uh, the uh, the Pepe deck, it became 53.5% of the representation of those 256 players. So it's not just like the format was just flooded with these decks. It was a 
literal fifth of the contention field rose to half and then became much more than half in the top cut breakdown. So people are going to throw around the arguments of, well, Spirals did so well at dominating this event because there were so many people there playing Spirals, or Pepe did so well at YCS Atlanta to get 29 out of 32 top spots because there were so many people there playing Pepe, which that is a, you know, that is a conclusion you can draw, but at least in this instance, there is data against that for YCS Sydney. It was literally a fifth of the field to 28, what I'm assuming is 28, out of the top 32 slots. So it's not necessarily that there's so many of this deck in contention that it's just forcing everything else out. No, it's this deck is very good. This deck has the capability to be better than everything else in the room, and it's going to excel at that if that's what it's been built to do. So... Based off the data I can find off YCS Sydney and the data that I have from YCS Atlanta and from YCS Dallas, like we can't really draw the conclusion of, oh, there were just so many people playing this deck. They don't need to hit this deck. Less people just need to be playing the deck. That's that's definitely not the case. That's definitely not true at all without data backing it up because we have data that says the exact opposite for at least one of these three events that I'm talking about. But so where does this come into play with an adjusted list? Well. Konami could very easily throw an adjusted list at us for Spirals to deal with Spirals because Konami and the TCG is very, very clear in when they want things to be hit, they take measures to do it quickly. Now, I don't know why it took Zoo so long to be neutered, but then again, we had other decks that can at least compete with Zoo, took wins off of Zoo, and all that sort of stuff. Spiral and four pow Full Power Pendulum, we never had that sort of thing, and they killed off Full Power Pendulum super quickly in the TCG after seeing the results from Sydney, and then I'm pretty sure the results from Atlanta uh, from Atlanta could have factored into it, but we already had the adjusted list announced before YCS Atlanta even began. So that's the thing. They looked at one event. They looked at YCS Sydney and was like, this can't happen anymore, <laughs> and they gave the adjusted list. Um, so, like, it's, it's ridiculous how quickly Konami can jump on this if they want to, especially since they've told us on the official website, on the official ban list page, the official Forbidden and Limited list page, that the next ban list will come no sooner than November. That being said, we're pretty damn close to November. We're a week away from November at this point. They could easily put out an adjusted list or just a ban list literally within the next week and say, this is legal November 1st. And then, you know, spirals are gone. It's also very interesting that Spiral Double Helix is one of those cards that just screams this card should be a secret rare. But for some reason it was printed as an Ultra. Now, Ultras are still hard to get reasonably, but they are not definitely 100% the reason that people are buying this set. You you make your mo you make your money, you know, rarity bumping these to secret rare that you know people are going to continue to buy the set to get because secret rares are so elusive as compared to super rares and ultra rares and commons. But Spiral Double Helix was an ultra rare. If they were going to make the card Secret Rare, I could see them not hitting this card in the future. If Konami wanted to put out a ban list and immediately ban Spiral Double Helix, especially with how quickly they imported it from Japan, I would not be surprised in the slightest. Because Double Helix is literally what threw this deck through the roof and made it the best deck. Spiral Double Helix is single-handedly what took this deck from being like a rogue tier 3 semi-competent deck where the pieces are all good but kinda don't work with each other, into a deck that literally can just vomit its resources out at your opponent and just control the entire status of the metagame. Double Helix is that card. There's no hits that need to be done to the regular Spiral deck around Double Helix. Just ban Double Helix and the problem is solved. And that's why I'm very curious and very suspect of Konami printing it as an Ultra Rare. I feel like they plan on this deck to have a very short lifespan in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because if they wanted to make, you know, Circuit Break sell like crazy, knowing, knowing that Spiral is 100% the best deck going into this format, because they have information from the OCG on how well it's performing over there, Rarity bump it to a Secret Rare, you're going to sell so much more Circuit Break than you would if it was an Ultra Rare, because you are going to have less of them in the, you know, accessibility pool, people buying product, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know, Konami doesn't like to ban Secret Rares right away. We saw this with the first adjusted list they gave us for Pendulums. They, you know, they didn't rarity bump Monkey Board. They didn't rarity bump any of the other cards that they were hitting. And then they just hit Monkey Board and they left the Secret Rare, Pendulum Sorcerer, untouched. Now, if Pendulum Sorcerer had been the common and Monkey Board had been bumped to Secret, I guarantee you, 
that Pendulum Sorcerer would have been the card to have been hit because Monk they wouldn't have wanted to hit their secret rare card. And I see the same sort of thing possibly happening here. There's no reason why Double Helix shouldn't have been a secret. It's such a good card for a deck that literally lives or dies by this card. But for some reason they made it an Ultra, which is still reasonably hard to get. But is not going to have nearly as much of a negative backlash if it is banned right away for being unhealthy for what they want the format to be than if it was a secret rare that was, you know, rarity bumps secret rare to be a thing to push product. So all of this being, you know, told in like in the amount of detail that I can present to you, I feel like we're going to be getting a ban list very, very soon. And honestly, I would not be surprised if that ban list, whether it's either a regular ban list or an adjusted ban list, I would not be surprised if we saw Double Helix just go away. Because they've done everything that looks on paper like it's an indication of they don't plan on this card being around for long. Because Ultra Rares aren't really what's selling Circuit Break for them. People are definitely buying the set for Double Helix, but they are also buying the set for Evenly Matched, Whatever, whatever other secret rares are in the set, hitting an ultra rare is not going to hurt the set's selling point nearly as much as if it was a secret rare and they had hit it. Because then at that point, you're buying a box and you have the potential of buying your box that has one to two secret rares in it, and that card is banned. <laughs> That's a huge hit to your selling point of your box. But if your secret rares aren't banned, then the set can still sell perfectly well. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below, but based off of the data that I can find from YCS Sydney, the, the deck breakdowns that I can find from Sydney in terms of the deck lists that are available, the deck breakdown from YCS Atlanta historically, how quickly Konami was to just shut down this deck that was just one deck above and beyond that was better than everything else, and nothing could really be disputed about that at the time, they were very quick to shut that down, and I feel like they're going to be very quick to shut that down again, whether it's with another list, an actual full-fledged ban list that they put out that's literally right around the corner, or they bypass what they've said about no new list coming until at least November, and they put out an adjusted list that takes effect to kill Spirals. I feel like these are very much things that are on the horizon, and I want to know what you guys' opinions are in the comments down below as to what I've said, what I've provided. Uh, if you disagree with my points, anything like that, let me know for certain in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links is always in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the videos I've been doing and you want to support the channel and my ability to make videos directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. Also, if you're interested in getting into my private Discord server as well as interested in Yu-Gi-Oh! product giveaways that happen every month, then definitely check out the reward tiers over on Patreon. And any support you'd like to give the channel, you have my thanks in advance for because it helps out a ton, as I've said many times in the past. But anyways, I've already said... Thank you for thank you so much for watching. Essentially, it, it helps keep these videos alive. The more people that watch, the more I want to make videos. So, definitely keep that in mind. But thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. But anyway, now the video is over. I'd like to give special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know, and you have my eternal gratitude as always. Thank you so much for the support, guys. You guys are awesome.